My name is Lincoln Overton, and today I will be presenting the story of Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger was born Margaret Louise Higgins in 1879. During this time, birth control was not even a word. Women, especially Catholic women, bore many children. Margaret's mother, Anne, was a Catholic who, like many, believed God would bless her with as many children as he wanted her to have. So, Anne became pregnant 18 times, resulting in giving birth to 11 children and having seven miscarriages. This event would later be one of the reasons that Margaret would become a birth control crusader. Margaret did not follow in her mother's footsteps, though, and continue her Catholic beliefs. She did, however, marry William Sanger in 1902. This marriage lasted 12 years, and they had three children, two boys and one girl. During her marriage to William, Margaret learned a great deal about women and what they desired as she became a nurse, had a brief career as a teacher, and then ultimately, in 1912, gave up everything to focus solely on birth control and sex education. During Margaret's days of nursing, she learned that many women did not want to have multiple pregnancies. Some were even turning to having abortions as these pregnancies were so unwanted. She often thought about the 18 pregnancies her mother had. She always believed that her mother's death at age 50 was due to having too many children. She blamed her father and somewhat her mother's Catholic beliefs also. After many discussions, Margaret concluded that multiple pregnancies could be associated with poverty, unemployment, alcoholism, domestic fighting, and even time in jail. She knew there was something needed to be able to stop these unwanted pregnancies. She also believed there was no reason for sick parents, for example, ones that had cancer, syphilis, epilepsy, and mental disorders to have children. Nor should parents have another child if their current children had any type of physical or mental defects. During this time, Margaret coined the term birth control. She prevented, she wanted to educate women about the options available, which could help prevent these unwanted pregnancies without taking away their desire to be sexually active. She also had a dream of finding a magic pill. While being an advocate for birth control and sex education sounds like an easy thing to do, back then there were federal and state Comstock laws that prevented the discussion, education, advertisement, and even distribution of birth control. This law did not deter Margaret as she decided the only way to continue her mission was to ignore the law and simply break it. Unfortunately, Margaret was found guilty of breaking the Comstock law in 1914, so she fled to England for a year to avoid a lengthy sentence in jail. Margaret was no stranger to being arrested and went to jail several times during her crusade, mostly for mailing diaphragms and condoms, the only two forms of birth control at the time. But then, in 1916, she was arrested for opening the first birth control clinic in New York City. She continued to educate women, defy the government, and worked tirelessly to keep birth control in the homes of many. Then, in 1921, she founded the American Birth Control League. This is the organization today we know as Planned Parenthood. For the next few decades, Margaret continued to distribute diaphragms and never stopped educating others about the use of birth control. She never let the government, religious beliefs, or even man stop her from educating those who did not want to get pregnant. While many did not believe she was morally correct in her beliefs, one would have to concede that she probably saved several lives in preventing what could have been an unhealthy pregnancy. When one starts bringing religion to what one considers a personal choice, things can become very foggy. And then when we add the government into the mix, that really, really adds to the blurry lines. But one thing is for sure, right or wrong, Margaret fought extremely hard for what she believed, and she never gave up on her dream of a magic pill. In 1950, Margaret raised $150,000 and underwrote the research needed to create the first human birth control pill. Ten years later, the very first oral contraceptive was approved by the FDA. This was one of Margaret's biggest accomplishments as she had been dreaming of that magic pill for over 38 years. Her other big accomplishment was witnessing one year before her death the landmark decision that found the Comstock Law to be unconstitutional as it interfered with, interfered with a person's right to privacy. This gave married couples the right to access birth control. While there were still many states that did not allow birth control to single women, we know that too was overturned as anyone in the U.S. is able to receive all forms of birth control no matter their marital status. Margaret died on September 6, 1966, while living in a nursing home in Arizona. The Sanger name can be found on numerous women's health clinics. Her conviction, her strong will and mind, and her inability to let anything defeat her resulted in a movement that many women are extremely grateful for. And while she may have upset the Catholic community, as well as many others along her way, 
She completed what she started and won the battle that took her over 50 years to fight. Thank you. And here are my sources. Thank you.